Holbrook New Media. This is Jeffrey K. Holbrook. Welcome to the audio feed from homebrooknewmedia.com. A year ago, I completed the narration of an audiobook called Penny Pincher Journal, How to Save Money Every Day. Since there is no Jeff and Jeffrey show today due to a death in the family, I will present the audio demo I did for the book. If you are interested in learning how to save money in your everyday life, I will have the link in the show notes, or you can go to holbrooknewmedia.com slash ppj. The PPJ stands for Penny Pincher Journal. You can get the book free with a new trial subscription to audible.com. Here's the demo. Frugal Connections In the past, living a frugal lifestyle often resulted in isolation to some degree. Extremely frugal people may have been homesteaders, physically isolated from others. They may have avoided communication technologies such as telephones, computers, cell phones, etc. to avoid the expense. Even paying for postage to send letters by snail mail would be an expense for a penny pincher to avoid. When I was a kid, I remember when making a long-distance phone call was a big deal. In my house growing up, I would say we made only a few long-distance calls every year. Today, the cost of communication technology has declined to the point where even very frugal people would not avoid purchasing and using it. You can get a capable Android tablet for under $100, allowing you to surf the web, play simple games, and communicate via email and Skype. You can also use your $100 tablet for free in restaurants and coffee shops with free Wi-Fi or you can pay about $50 per month to get unlimited Wi-Fi service in your home. You can get a free smartphone with a $45 per month data plan that allows you to make practically all the long-distance phone calls you want. The point is that it requires less money than ever to stay connected with other people. Penny pinchers do not need to live in isolation to save money anymore. Universal Publishing Another capability that cheap technology enables is free publishing opportunities. Anyone can publish a website for free that can be viewed by anyone in the world. All you need is a free account on Blogger and you can be an author. You can post videos to YouTube that anyone can watch. It is easy and free to self-publish an ebook that anyone can read. I remember as a kid thinking how cool it would be to publish a book someday. Back then, the physical limitation of producing a typed manuscript that could be published was a huge barrier. I had a collar computer from Radio Shack that I purchased with proceeds from detasseling corn, but we did not have a printer that was suitable to produce a manuscript. Now I can edit and publish blog posts from my laptop computer with no printing required. I can even publish an ebook without printing anything. And the laptop I use now costs less than my old color computer back in the 1980s. In the days on the farm growing up before the internet as we know it existed, receiving a catalog was sort of like surfing a website. We could receive catalogs of seeds and garden plants starting in early spring. We also received catalogs selling science equipment and fishing tackle. I imagined that one day I could have my own camera, darkroom, computer, and printer to make my own catalog. With today's technology, I am able to offer products for sale on my websites with only my computer. I produce web pages and blog posts that include high resolution photos and videos. This is all published at no cost, and anyone in the world can read it for free. Simplicity through technology. One trend I have noticed, people need less stuff because of technology. Books are a good example of this concept. In order to read a traditional paper book, you need to cut down trees, make paper, print the book, ship the book, read the book, then find a place to keep the book after reading it. With electronic books, a lot of the resource consumption is eliminated. No paper is required. No shipping is required and no storage space for the book is required. It is stored in the cloud or in your reading device. People like the efficiency provided by the transition from physical objects to digital files. 
you can store hundreds or even thousands of books on a small device and access any of them at any time. This principle does not only apply to books. Smarter products can be more efficient products. There is potential for improvements in technology to result in less demand for resources, breaking the trend of increasing demand for resources as people acquire more technology. Consumerism will live on, and people will always want bigger and better things. But those new things might just be less expensive, more efficient, and use fewer resources than the old things. This is the future of frugal. You can find this book on audible.com by going to holbrooknewmedia.com slash ppj. Also, you can go to holbrooknewmedia.com and follow the link on the left side of the page for the book on amazon.com. These links will also be in the show notes. Thanks for listening.